Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. Today, I will talk about the quite rapid robot learning dexterous manipulation skills with its limbs. I'm Tuan Shi, and this is this work is a cooperation between the RSL lab in ETH Zurich and the JSK lab in the University of Tokyo. So first, I will give a quick introduction about the background. So for the quadrupedal robot, recently they did very well in the commotion, and they show a lot of applications in inspection and object management in transportation tasks. However, for the physical interaction, especially the dexterous manipulation tasks, it's still lacking the ability. So based on these ideas, and uh, this research, we are trying to focus on the whole body quadrupedal manipulation. Especially, we try to explore the maximum potentials of quadrupedal dexterous manipulation ability. So this work is actually motivated by the quadrupedal animals and the human babies, which they usually use their back to support them, to, to free all the limbs for the, for the manipulation task. So how about the quadrupedal robot? Could, could we do the same way? So we just follow the initial settings, like the animals and the babies, and then in this research, we try to demonstrate with a, a robot manipulate a big ball, which the goal is to rotate the ball in the pitch yaw direction on the different speed command, and try to achieve a dy dynamic manipulation performance. But actually, there is a lot of challenges in this task. The first, the ball is not perfectly rigid which is very easy to uh, to be deformable. And also the contact is very difficult to model for such kind of ball. And the last, the ball is also very lightweight with respect to the powerful robot motor. So in summary, the challenges are first, the test is difficult to model because of the deformable object and the contact it, or itself is difficult to model. And second, we are afraid the dynamic manipulation is are required in this task. The reason is quasi static would fail because of the unstable gravity. Because the foothold of the each leg is very small, so it's very difficult to achieve stable grasping with only three legs. But for the dynamic manipulation, it's still very difficult to model and to control. And third, the challenge is the high dimensional control space for whole body control. Like the quadrupedal rapid robot we use in this uh, uh, research, it has 12 actuators to control. So for approach, the, there is one work based on the model-based method but it requires a very accurate model. And uh, in this their work, they assume the quasi-static motion and assume there is no sleep, no noise, and all the coefficients are fixed and known, which is very difficult to in a real robot under such kind of assumption. So except the model-based method, we use uh, Model free deep reinforcement learning method, which we train in the simulation with a lot of various noises and the kernel disturbance, and then achieve the zero shot deployment on the real robot. The observation state in our system is 130 dimensions. So the first part is the robot related and then it's object related. So for robot parts, which include the uh, joint velocity, joint position, and joint command. 
for the object part is include the bot position and the bot orientation with respect to the target and also the history information of this all uh, state and finally it's the remain time of the task so one thing to notice is in this world we don't use any context measurement sensor for reward function First, we have the uh, orientation reward, which is to encourage a bot to follow the target command. And second, we have a robot based reward to, we don't want a robot based have a large velocity because it's very easy to break the robot. And third is the joint talk reward, which is to discourage the joint motion, cause high talk and also the sleep reward in the simulation which is uh, based on the tangent velocity between the uh, foothold and the uh, ball to avoid too large uh, slippage between the foot and the ball and finally the contact reward we try to avoid too much contact velocity between the foothold and the ball to to reduce the deformation between the, the of the ball. And to make our policy more robust, to achieve the same to real transfer transferring, we also add the domain randomization in student learning, which includes the, the randomization in robot configuration like the uh, leg position and length, and also the joint state we add the noise in the joint position and the velocity. For the object side we add the randomization parameters to the physical model and the contact model of the ball. And the ball is uh, balls actually we have external motion capture to detect the ball state. However because the ball is not perfect uh, sphere so actually the center of gravity position has very large noise. So we during learning we also added noises on the both position and orientation. And finally in the very beginning stage for the initialization state, like the robot configuration and the both position, we also uh, added a randomized randomized pattern of that to, to this state. And another point to make our policy more robust is we add the external discipline in the simulation. So in detail, the, we add the continuous external force in random direction and the period is 0 0.4 seconds and the probability is 20 percentage. To avoid the unfeasible solution or even local minima, we also add the early termination for the agent in case when the robot gets self collision or the ball gets contact with some other links or the ball is out of the manipulation region. In the training process for the neural network of the a policy network and the value network, we use the 200 major MLP network. And the output will directly sent to robot without any filter. The learning process, we use a, a curriculum learning, which in which uh, task difficulties will improve gradually. Um, like the target velocity will become larger and larger and the target update period will be more and more frequently and that's because the high frequent gate will enable a more robust dynamic manipulation performance and for the training algorithm we directly use the PPO algorithm so we train in the simulation under the uh, our randomization we mentioned before 
and then the policy could be directly transferred to the uh, real robot without any modification. So this video shows the manipulation rotation velocity with the 15 degree per second, and the maximum uh, rotation speed could be um, maximum rotation time could more manipulation time could more than two minutes, and you can see the tracking performance is also very good. And then we test it by our system with the random uh, external force. So even there is external force, and the robot could quickly uh, recover and continue to manipulate. And we also added a random force on the robot hardware, which will immediately change the contact point. And our system could also show the uh, very robust recovery under such kind of uh, external force, external disturbance. And the maximum rotation speed in our test achieve 25 degree per second. And in the final part of this research, we also discuss the uh, similarity and the difference between the locomotion and the manipulation in which they are regarded as a dual problem. So the difference we see here is the first the speed reward is difference and second the foot clearance and the gate pattern are different. So in locomotion we usually have some preset foot clearance and the gate pattern. But however for the manipulation test we found it's very difficult to uh, to have some intuitive foot clearance or even gate pattern. And second, we also compare our index manipulation with the dexterous hand manipulation, actual open AI research. And uh, what we found is because uh, uh, in our robot, the actuator power is much powerful than the, uh, than the dexterous hand. So we have to be more careful about the, like the joint torque and joint velocity compared to the dexterous hand manipulation. So in summary, this research we first developed the framework towards the quadrupedal dexterous four-limb manipulation. And we demonstrated the effectiveness with the very challenge uh, circus task to manipulate a ball. And third, we very by the robustness of our proposed system with random external disturbance force in your real experiment. And as far as in our best knowledge, it is the first work to achieve the dynamic dexterous uh, object manipulation on the real quadrupedal robot. That's all for my presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, Please feel free to leave it here. Thank you very much for your attention.